I want to bring up a chart here, Dan Morris, and this goes to all of the different shocks we've seen with our courage to stay within the equity markets. We've shown this many times. You know what? It may be chart of the year. I'm not there yet. But the corrections in yellow, the bear market in red, none of this happened. We go down. Dan Morris steps in like a genius in May. Dan Morris steps in like a genius in August. I mean, everything's great, Dan. But there's this soup of things, momentum value, small cap, large cap. And also the idea of just staying with those 30 big names. What does BMP Paribas suggest? Do I still buy U.S. large cap? Uh, we actually are still overweight U.S. equities uh, versus uh, Europe and also overweight developed market versus emerging. So from that point of view, yes, we do think that's the best opportunity. You've got uh, a reasonably good combination of earnings momentum in certain sectors, uh, supportive monetary policy at trend growth, which maybe doesn't seem as good as we had earlier in the, in the year when it was 3 percent, but compared to most other parts of the world, that's not bad at all. So given the alternatives, we do still like U.S. equities in certain sectors with it. Is there enough ammo out there still for the share buybacks that has supported the market? Well, to be honest, that's been one of the concerns so far this year. If you do look at the earnings revision trend, a lot of the gains that you have had in EPS, and again, they haven't been particularly strong, uh, but a lot of it has come from a reduction in share count. Mm -hmm. So companies are reducing uh, shares in order to boost EPS because you don't have the underlying earnings momentum that you would like to see. So without question, that is a concern. But I think that also <clears> explains why you've had quite anemic returns for global equities, certainly for U.S. equities right. uh, for the last four months and really since last autumn.